How do cracks and internal voids impact the life of concrete? My name is Tyler Lay and I love concrete. Cracks, a lot of people are super scared of them. They're like really worried that they've totally degrade the concrete. Well, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. I'm gonna explain that to you coming up. I've got two surfaces, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the right's got a big crack in it. Why this is a big deal is that when outside chemicals hit the surface of the concrete, this may be de-icing salts or ocean water, they'll actually start to penetrate. And the one on the left will just penetrate at the surface, but where the crack is, it'll penetrate much deeper. And not only that, but that crack, it actually protects those outside chemicals. It keeps them from evaporating. What am I talking about? Here's an image of cracked concrete after it's rained. And if you look down in the cracks, you can see they're wet. They're actually filled with water, with solution. The cracks protect them from the wind and from the sun beating down and they help hold those chemicals at the surface of the concrete. So those chemicals will penetrate even more and it will go even deeper. And why is this a big deal? Because those chemicals will keep going down and if they get to your rebar, it's bad. It's real bad. Remember, the rebar's job is to stop the cracks. It's to keep them small. But if a crack gets big enough, once it fills with outside chemicals, it takes it right to the surface of the rebar. Yikes! But are all cracks created equal? We're gonna try to answer that question. We're gonna use something called an X-ray fluorescent microscope. What it does is it focuses X-rays down to a 50 micron size, to the size of a human hair. And then it maps the surface of the concrete. And what it allows you to do is go from seeing light to seeing chemistry by wearing chemical glasses. When you do this, you can see the chemistry on the surface of the concrete. On the right, I can see all the different types of aggregates that are in the concrete. In the middle here, this is what's most important for us today. We can actually see different amounts of chlorides. We've shown them with blue. This is the highest amount, the dark blue. We see a little bit lower amount where it gets a little bit lighter and a little bit lower amount where it gets even lighter and then the gray is where there's no chlorides at all. Isn't this awesome? So what does this have to do with concrete? Well, we've taken a core out of a bridge and we've cored it where there were cracks. And I'm showing the cracks here. There's a crack on the left that actually is a little bit larger than the crack on the right. You can't tell, I've drawn them in for you with black. The crack on the left is around 400 microns. The crack on the right is about 100 microns. So what happens when the out with the outside chemicals? Does the crack size change how that performs? We need our chemical glasses. Let's get them on. We can see. Oh, look on the left where the crack is much larger. Look at the dark blue. Remember dark blue? That means higher amounts of chlorides. And look at the smaller crack. It's tighter. And we don't see near as many chlorides in there. What's going on? So to answer this question, are all cracks created equal? We have to think about what these cracks look like. The one on the left is pretty big. The one on the right is kind of small. So when outside chemicals try to penetrate it, the big one, it just goes flowing in. There's nothing holding it back. But the one on the right, because the crack is small, something different happens. Let's zoom in. Let's focus in and see what's going on. If we zoom way in and see the water molecules right along that crack, there's actually something called surface tension that holds them together. This is kind of like dripping on a faucet. Right, it holds it back, it keeps it down, keeps it dripping very, very carefully into the concrete, it doesn't flood in. 
the crack is small enough, the water won't penetrate, or at least not penetrate rapidly. And this surface tension concept is all around us in nature. That's why bugs and lizards can run on the water. That's why leaves float on the water, or when a water drop falls, it forms like this perfect sphere. It's pretty awesome. Now, cracks aren't the only big deal. Air bubbles or voids are a big issue. If they're on the surface, like in this picture, they're kind of like a huge crack. The surface bubble, once the outside chemicals try to penetrate, it's like a huge crack. It just lets them into the concrete. If you have a structure like this that's not consolidated very well, with all these voids inside of it, well, this internal void's gonna act like a massive crack, like a freight train into the concrete. We don't want that. And if you have smaller voids that happen to be connected, well, it might go slow to here and then it'll go fast and then slow and then fast and then slow and then fast again. And it'll penetrate into the concrete. These are a big deal in summary. Not all cracks are created equal. These cracks that are greater than 400 microns, they're gonna reduce your cover. And voids are kind of a big deal. We need to get them out of our concrete by vibrating it really well, by vibrating our forms really well to get all those bubbles off of it. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment below. Think about subscribing. Take care, everybody. Bye.